Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello here, and welcome to the very first episode of Everything Possible in Dark Souls 2, which is a follow-up to the last series, Everything Possible Before Boss. A number of you have sent me messages and left me comments on the videos indicating that you wanted to see the series continue through the entire game with this character, so here you go. So we're picking up exactly where we left off. In other words, we have to kill a few bosses in order to see anything new. So first and foremost, we head over to the Forest of Fallen Giants, and we're going to take out the last giant. Now one of the things that we will be doing since we're going to be continuing through the whole game is we're going to attempt to get every NPC's quest line completed on this playthrough as well. So first and foremost we have mild mannered Pate. Now Pate has two storylines essentially, one to get his gear and one to make sure that him and Creighton meet up in a final confrontation in Brightstone Cove, Saldora. This first task we're going to complete is summon him for the last giant fight and make sure he survives. This will ensure that we'll get his gear when we meet him up later on in Lower Earthen Peak. So we'll summon him, we're going to go in, I'm going to cut the cutscene. And this is not a boss strategy walkthrough. There are plenty of them out there and I am in no way shape or form a boss expert in this game. So I'll be taking them out basically as easy as I see fit. In this case it's going to be Great Lightning Spear, just so long as Pate survives. You can see with the item collection that we did prior to fighting any bosses, these first few bosses are going to be incredibly easy. Go ahead and rip the arm off, it doesn't matter. Alright, so with the last giant down, we get his soul and we also get the soldier's key which opens up two additional areas in the Forest of Fallen Giants, one which leads to an optional area known as Soldier's Rest, and the other one leads to the Pursuer boss fight. So first we will go and we'll check out Soldier's Rest and see what items we can find. Here I am being conservative on spell uses, so I decided to punch with the Witch Tree Bellvine. Which gets me hit twice. Don't be stingy on spells, guys. So now we turn right, and this door is now accessible to us. And now I start getting smart. Now I will say that the items down here are not necessarily the most desirable items, but if you want to get something like the Bastard Sword or if you want to pick up the Hunter Set, this is where you're going to go to do so early on. Here I'm switching out to the Traveling Merchant's Hat so I can actually increase my drop rate, something I forgot to do a moment ago. And it will actually turn out to be very beneficial later on. Pick up a torch. And there are a few different routes that you can take. I like to go straight into the building and attack it from the inside out. You will have to deal with some of these old ironclads. They're rust and algae covered armor. I think that was a nice touch. For you Ninja Turtle cosplay enthusiasts, you may want to stay here and farm the old ironclads for a while because their armor is what everyone else uses in order to play as Leonardo or Donatello, along with some creative character creation. Hollow Infantry armor, and we get our Bastard Sword. Now you can buy one of these later on in the game, but why buy when you can get things for free? Right, Malentia? You didn't like that time I punched you in the face, did you? A couple more ironclads up here. And I severely misjudged his running attack, but that's okay. Two of these resonant souls take him out very easily. And get the shiny over here for a soul of a nameless soldier and three more cracked red eye orbs. You know, we haven't bought any orbs, and yet, we do have a number of them. And 
and that soldier just dropped yet another hollow infantry helm. I'm not even sure how many of those we have so far. And we'll get ourselves another amber herb and a green blossom. Now the other side of that portcullis is an area we've already explored where we picked up a titanite shard, we ran into Kale the cartographer, a couple other items in there. But we run through this building, and up these stairs, open the wooden chest, pick ourselves up the hunter set, as well as a large soul of a proud knight. So if you want to look like Robin Hood, this is the armor to go with, or at least the hat. It doesn't have a feather, but I don't know if Robin Hood had a feather. I don't know, post in the comments below if Robin Hood had a feather. So here is the Soldier's Rest Bonfire. And we have one more area to explore with a possible item to pick up. Wrong way. So go into this next room. And there's a tree of a giant. And luckily, we got a seed of a tree of giants. Now that item has a 10% chance of spawning regularly. And every time you get invaded, it goes up by another 10% until one spawns. There are a couple trees that they can spawn at. And what this item does is, when you get invaded, if you use it, it is a consumable, the enemies will actually start attacking your invader. Now a word of caution. They will also attack any blue sentinels that have been summoned to help you out when you're invaded. So keep that in mind. If you have a blue sentinel with you, you may not want to use a seed of a tree of giant. Unless you're a jerk. In that case, go ahead. So here's another door that we can now open with the soldier's key. And I'm just ignoring these enemies because they don't drop anything of interest to me. Probably nothing I don't already have anyway. But that fog gate's going to lead to the pursuer right there. But instead, we're going to go and take a detour up these stairs. And grab ourselves a soul of a nameless soldier and three more life gems. Ignoring them again, let's go ahead and take out the pursuer. And again, no great strategies here. I'm not even going to claim that these are pro strats. These are just me dodging his very easy dash attacks and then unleashing spells. I decided not to go with the parry and the ballista because you've probably all seen that if you watch any speedruns. Now, as you can see, my lightning spear is doing more damage to the pursuer than it was to the last giant. And the pursuer actually does have more HP, which tells us that he does have very low resistance to lightning. So if you have lightning spells or if you have any weapon that does lightning damage, this could be a good spot to use it. You get the soul of the pursuer and the ring of blades. The ring of blades does give you an extra plus 35 to your physical damage. So if you're going for melee only, not a bad ring. And here we go for the Drang Lake set. Drang Lake Sword, the Shield, Mail, Gauntlets, and Leggings. The only thing missing is the Helm. And in order to get the Helm, you're not going to get it until late game. In fact, you're not going to get it until you start invading the Giant's Memories, because Captain Drummond is the one who gives it to you. And the reason is, that's Captain Drummond's set. So if you do want to get the Helm, which we will get later on, you need to go and kill the Giant Lord in the memory of Jay. And once you've done that, you can go into the memory of Amar, talk to Captain Drummond, and he will give you the Helm. And then you will have the complete Drang Lake set. So I go over to show you that this is another Tree of the Giants. So this is another place that the seed can possibly spawn. Nothing behind it. And what we're going to do is go up these stairs. And we're going to check out this nest. And similar to the nest in Dark Souls 1, we will get picked up by a giant bird. What species is it is up to your imagination. Could be a crow, could be a raven, whatever. Is it Velka? Isn't it Velka? Is it a servant of Velka? Isn't it a servant of Velka? I don't know. I, I just don't know. It doesn't look like a crow to me, personally. Or a raven. So we get transported to the Lost Bastille. Now, we are not going to take on the Lost Bastille yet. In fact, it's going to be a few episodes away, and we have a reason for that. But for now, we're going to go ahead and warp out of here. And while we're here, we might as well do a bit of leveling. I am going to start raising up my strength and dexterity just so we have more options for melee because I don't want to just use spells. I'm honestly mu not much of a spellcaster. I prefer melee anytime I can. I do like high dex. I like to roll around. I don't like shields. So I'm going to try to expand my options by leveling up those attributes a little bit so I can use more weapons. Change out my attunements just a little. And let's head over to Hades Tower of Flame.
Now, normally I would have sped this area up because you've already seen me do it. You've already seen some of the drops that these enemies can drop. However, I get exceptionally lucky this time around. So I wanted to actually leave it in here to show some of the items that they can drop. And again, the only item fine increasing equipment that I have on is the Traveling Merchant's Hat. So if you can imagine putting more on as well as the Gold Covetous Serpent Ring plus two or plus one, whichever one you can get your hands on, this can be a very good farming spot if you want to get some of their equipment. And once you have a mace in hand, even when it's unupgraded like this one is, you make very short work of these knights. Crack blue eye orb. That's not the item drop that I was excited to tell you about, by the way. So hang tight. Now, I find that three light attacks followed by one strong attack is enough to take them out. And there we go, Old Knight Greatsword. So the very first of the Old Knight items that we're going to get during this run. Helm of the Old Knight set. Now speaking of the Old Knight set, in the description it talks about how when something is about to break or something is about to die, sometimes it unleashes a great power or something along those lines. I don't have the description in front of me. Some people have made claims that they've seen the items, the armor specifically, when it breaks, give off a Wrath of God type effect. Now are these people trolling? Have they actually seen this? I'm not sure. I've never seen it myself, and I've never seen confirmation. It's all been anecdotal up till now. So, if you want to try something out, get yourself some of the old knight equipment, the armor, the weapons, and there's the old knight armor, and see if you can get anything to proc when it breaks. Now, all the items have very low durability. However, the weapons are pretty strong, and the armor has pretty good defense. So, the item description could just be referring to the low durability, but otherwise decent stats of the equipment. We're not sure. So I'll speed it up because nothing special happens here. And here is Masterless Glencore. Now Masterless Glencore, if you do it right, which, spoiler alert, I do not, he can assist you with both the Dragon Rider and the, drag the old Dragon Slayer boss. However, if you want to summon him for both, you need to defeat the Dragon Rider first. If you do what I did, which is speed along up to the old Dragon Slayer, unfortunately his summon sign does not come back for the Dragon Rider. If you do the Dragon Rider first, you can walk outside the boss arena, summon him again, and run up here and take on Ornstein. There I am, just making sure I have all the right equipment. And again, nothing special with this boss fight. This is not a strategy video. Basically, my plan is to get Glencore to get his aggro, and then just spam whatever spells I have. And the old Dragon Slayer is another boss that is weak to lightning. In fact, a lot of the bosses in this game are weak to lightning. When in doubt, use lightning. Not on all of them. The Mirror Knight, not so weak to lightning. And the funny thing is, when you fought Ornstein in Dark Souls 1, he was very resistant to lightning. So, it does beg the question, is this that Ornstein? Is this the same Ornstein that maybe has now been corrupted by the Abyss? Because it does look like he's using some of the Abyss powers. Or is this just another knight that happens to look like him? I don't know. Old Dragon Slayer Soul and the Old Leo Ring. The Old Leo Ring will give you a 12.5% damage increase to your counter attack damage. Three cracked blue eye orbs in this chest. And we'll go over to the iron chest. And we'll pick up the Hade Knight Iron Mask and the Tower Shield. So, if you want to look like the Hade Knight, this is the first piece of armor that you can definitely get. The other pieces are going to drop from the Hade Knights themselves in New Game Plus and beyond. And this is Blue Sentinel Targray. 
and we can't talk to him. And the reason is, you can only talk to him once you've had a token of fidelity in your inventory. You, you can do that one of two ways. You can do co-op using the regular just... white sign soapstone and defeat a boss, or or you can pick one up in Huntsman's Cops, which I will show you how to get in a future you are episode. No long, proud knight. So I cut it there just Where so I could show you how to enter the Covenant. We did get the Guardian Seal. This and the way the Blue Sentinels work is they can be summoned to help members of the Way of Blue, who you get from Crestfallen Saldan in Majula. And if the Ways of Blue are invaded, you have a chance of being pulled into their world to assist them with the invader. Just showing off some of the spells they have, or he has. I am going to pick up Emit Force and Heavenly Thunder. Emit Force is just a basically a magical projectile, a ball of energy, and Heavenly Thunder is an AoE lightning attack. I'm going to go light this bonfire. We're not going to warp out of here though because we do have another boss. So I will go ahead and speed it up till I'm there. I do go back to pull the levers because I don't want to show the Dragon Rider falling off the ledge strategy. Again, if you've seen any of the speedrunning videos, you've probably seen it. You go in, you let him take six and a half to seven steps, and then you just dash to his right, and he's going to go right off the edge. So pull both levers to expand the arena to its maximum size. Let's go down, and I thought I was going to be able to summon Masterless Glencore, and I could not. And I was in despair. Great despair. But anyway, he's a very easy boss. If you can dodge the old knights, you can dodge the dragon rider. Alternately, if you can dodge a wrench, you can probably dodge the dragon rider. I'm just going to use great magic weapon on the mace, two-hand it, and just go to town when I can. I really like the Dragon Rider shield. I'm not a shield guy, but I just think it has a really cool design. And yes, you can get that later on once you meet up with Strayed in the Lost Bastille. Pick up the Dragon Rider soul. Let's go upstairs. And we'll talk to one of the most evil characters in the game. Alicia. She doesn't seem that evil now, but trust me, she's she's not a good person. Are you from My name is Lissy. I have Now with her, if you can talk to her when you have at you least 30 faith, me. she's going to give you this. The Idol's Chime and the Saint Go Set. On. Now the Idol's Chime is a very very good chime and the Saint Set, the hood will actually give you extra cast of your spells if you're wearing it. So definitely a good set to have if you can manage to get 30 faith before talking to her great if not we can always meet up with her again just outside of Majula. I'd heard the I and I am going to exhaust her dialogue so I can get her to move to that spot. And Here's a tip. Exhaust all NPC dialogue as often as you can. Oftentimes they have items that they'll give you or they'll move to an alternate location. And many times it won't be triggered and we'll see that in the next episode when I explore Dead Man's Wharf. They won't move, or they won't trigger an event until you've exhausted all their dialogue. There, see, lest this. Going to spend what souls I have. But other than that, that is going to do it. The Force of Fallen Giants in Hades Tower is now completely cleared. The only reason we'll go back to the Force of Fallen Giants towards the end of the game is to access the giant memories. But other than that, we've gotten all the items we can. We've defeated all the enemies we can. 
and this is the start of a new series. I will be going through the entire game bit by bit, just like we've done with the previous series and this first episode. So each episode will, for the most part, contain one single area for the most part. For example, next episode we'll be exploring Dead Man's Warp. Some of the bigger areas we will take up two episodes. But until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys next time.